platform. And what we've seen is that trends that may start in Japan will eventually work their way over to the United States. Uh, I love drifting. I think it's an incredible, incredible uh, sport, or if you really call it a sport, it's a sort of a sub-movement. Uh, we've been covering drifting for years, and now it's really come on the mainstream in, in, uh, in the States. But the problem is everybody thinks drifting is going to be the next big thing. And like I was saying, um, it's based on a, you have to have a front engine rear wheel drive car. It has to be a lightweight car. It has to be a certain type of platform. Right now, the two best cars for drifting are essentially a 1985 Corolla, Toyota Corolla, and a, an early 90s Nissan 240SX with a Japanese motor that's getting harder and harder to come by because everybody's bringing them over from Japan. And we're actually we're actually using up all the supplies that they have, like all the surplus that they have in, in Japan right now. So there's no current cars on the market right now. So if you want like manufacturer backing or anything like that, and you want to really grow the grow the movement, as they say, um, you can't. You know, so that's sort of the, the the problem we're running into right now is that there's no there's no available cars to do it with. You know, and a lot of people in the states they don't want to take the time to learn how to do it. It's so much easier to dress up your car and take it to a car show or it's so much easier to run your car down a drag strip, but when it comes to drifting, uh, it takes a lot of time and patience and skill, you know, to, in order to perfect, perfect something like that. You do that with a rear-wheel drive car. And you know, how the Japanese managed to steal that from us when that's like inherently a redneck activity that's boondocking, getting out there in a rear wheel drive car and you know, laying patch. <laughs> That should have been an American thing first. They beat us to it. 